Welcome. I have Isabel Sullivan from LVL Studios in Montreal with me today. Isabel, why don't you give us an introduction and tell us a bit about yourself. I am a major accounts director at LVL Studio. What that entails is I am part of the, both the commercial team. Um, I'm also executive producer for our media and entertainment division. Um, and I've come from a background of television uh, production where I've migrated to uh, producing for the digital side for uh, TV products, so derivatives of TV. Why don't you tell us a bit about today's topic, which is what is t-commerce and how does it work? Okay, so let's give ourselves a simple definition of t-commerce. What we really mean by t-commerce is being able to do transactional uh, commerce online through experiences, uh, in this case pretty much linked to television, but being able to do it instantaneously in one uh, kind of area um, and that being uh, brought on by either advertising banners or content and linking out to, uh, to do that transaction. Can you tell us a recent example that you've worked on um, that shows how t-commerce works? Sure. So an example of a t-commerce would be, for example, if you've got a second screen experience um, with a primetime TV show. Um, you can have a banner ad. Uh, in the case that we worked on, for example, there was an ad for a car dealership. And so the commerce side of it was, wasn't necessarily a transaction in that case, um, but it, you could book a test drive, which would then, if you did the test drive, would give you a substantial kind of rebate if you did buy the car. So it was a transaction for a, a later time, but it's still kind of a, a, a transaction. Another example would be you have an ad and uh, we've had ads and you could click on it and buy directly the same outfit that the host had on during the show. So that's a, a simple example where I'm one click away, I can go to the transaction to, to any major outlet and proceed with a transaction. And do you think there's some genres that work better with t-commerce than others? Obviously, um, you want appointment TV. Just like second screen, the t-commerce does apply. So we're talking about um, sports, which people are easily going to do buy-in. So if you imagine watching the Super Bowl, the finals of the uh, Canadian Football League, and being one click away from ordering a pizza or ordering some chicken wings, it's a natural transaction. You've got reality shows where you can do a, uh, a transaction to buy products or buy, uh, buy products of sponsors that works very well. People expect it in a reality show context. Um, you've got major dramas where if the action is very, um, is, is a, like a love drama or if it's a love show, uh, people will subscribe to that brand and, and want to be like it, so buy the same outfit as the star. And the same thing applies for magazine shows or talk show types, where if you're demonstrating a product, if um, a guest has great shoes on, uh, you can click and buy those shoes. So that kind of uh, t-commerce applies for any appointment TV. And how much of this design process is customized for the producer and how much of this is repurposable? Well, I think there's three ways of going about it. Um, there are companies like LVL um, and there are other out there <clears throat> that have a product. So ours is called Purple and there are plenty of them um, in Canada, in Europe, and in the States. So with a product, normally you come with a set of tools that allow a, sh uh, a very quick turnaround to get these to market, and normally it's, it's since it's pre-packaged, the price can also go down. So that pre-packaged options comes with you know, a set of, of different tools for types of TV. So that's fully kind of out of the box that you can buy and just proceed. Then you've got, uh, you've always got those brands that want something completely custom. They want to do something that's never been done before and that won't necessarily be done again because it's so specific to a product. In that case, you're going to want to build an experience from, from the bottom up. When that happens, obviously there are more costs. So because it's not necessarily something that can be productized by the companies afterwards in the new media side of things, the cost will tend to go up on that on that front. 
And I think where the sweet middle is and a lot of uh, advertising companies and, and brands are comfortable is in the, you use a product, but you customize um, a part of the experience. So you still have that quick time to market um, and you can still customize it to the brand. And we feel like that's where a lot of companies um, will go to because you can both tailor to the brand that's advertising and the TV show and customize that story so it comes together. So how affordable is this? Like if I was a producer and I was considering of adapting this to my next project, um, what kind of pricing are we looking at? Okay, so on average, you can have a second screen experience for under 100K. So what that means is that you're able to, when you have a product, you're able to have a second screen experience for a limited amount of money. So that being said, with funds like the Bell Fund or the CMF Fund, you're able to go in and finance these second screen experiences. And if you're going with a solution that already exists, within that budget normally, you'll be able to get those tools for advertising. So let's say that in the total budget, you can account for five to $10,000 specifically for the advertising on average. But within $100,000, you should be able to do something both for the content and the brands.